Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us uh, yet again for another day uh, where we begin our day with the Lord. We begin our day thinking about His goodness and His grace and His mercy. And as I'm reminded, as I have been so many times through this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, that God is seated on the throne, that He is still God in control of all things. And we praise Him and we worship Him for all that He's doing in and through all all of this. And I know that through all of this, I've been encouraged many times by the comments and messages that have been sent um, for, for people just telling me, hey, uh, we've been watching. Thank you for doing it. Um, we, are, we are blessed to be a part of what God is doing in your life during these times, um, especially when we can't be together in person. And so um, again, just a thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for taking the time to join us. It does mean a lot and it is an encouragement to me. This morning, we're going to be in Psalm chapter 62, and we're going to look at verses 5 through 8. And I know that these times have um, have, have kind of turned our world topsy-turvy, and that's the reason we started doing these videos. But the reality is, is even though our lives can get flipped upside down, even though our worldviews can be dismantled by what's happening and, and our, our, our values are, are strangely discovered in times of crisis like we've been experiencing over the past several months. But here's the thing. As I stated at the beginning of this, God hasn't changed. God has not changed one bit, even though our entire world has. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the psalmist, in Psalm chapter 62, verses 5 through 8, I get that feeling, I get that sense when I read this, is that God has not changed. He is the rock. He is the sure thing on which we hope and we trust daily. And I think we need that reminder. I think we need to remind ourselves constantly that God doesn't change. So when our world falls apart, he's still there. When our situations and circumstances change, he's still seated on the throne. He is still there for us to go to whenever we find help, uh, need to find help in time of need. Now, David wrote this psalm, and it's a psalm of encouragement. It's a psalm uh, that's meant to give the reader hope. And as we read it in verse 5, it says, For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He, is, he only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, all people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I read that and I just got encouraged. My soul kind of did a, a little skip and a, and a jump, if you will, because I was, I was reminded of just the goodness of God that are, that are pen, that's penned here in the words of David. And if we go back to verse 5, it says, For God alone... For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence. It's like David reminds himself that there is only one for whom we are supposed to wait. And that is God. We are supposed to wait in silence, trusting him, trusting his plan, trusting what he wants. You see, we have the, the tendency, and I find that I'm, I'm guilty of this. If I message somebody or I text somebody, they don't text back right away. I, I kind of get a little bit irritated. Now, I'm just saying that because that's my human nature. Especially, I think what makes it worse is, is on all our messages, we can see whether they've, they've read it or not. And it's even worse when they've read it. It's like, oh, why aren't you saying anything back? Why aren't you saying? And it doesn't work like that with God. We have to trust that when we go to God, He hears us. We have to trust that, that He has a plan and a purpose going on in, in His, His almighty sovereign character. That he knows exactly what he's doing. And so we wait on him in silence, trusting and knowing that we can still hope in whatever he brings our way. Whatever he allows, whatever he brings as part of his will. And the psalmist again reminds himself, for he only is my rock and my salvation. Only God is our, our, our solid rock on which we stand. Only God is the sure thing. Only God uh, is... Is, is our salvation from only God. He's also our fortress. You see, the rock is the sure footing that we stand on. The fortress, being God being our fortress, is, is he's our protector. He's the one who keeps us safe. He's the one who goes and, and stops the attacks of the enemy on our behalf. And he says, I won't be shaken. Why? Because I'm on sure footing 
And God is my fortress. God is the one who fights for me. God is the one who is standing there protecting me. David knew and understood that. He's my rock. He's my salvation. He's my fortress. These are all things that, that, that gave David the assurance that he needed to not move from where he stood with God, to not move from that place where he was in his life with God. And he reminds himself again in verse seven, on God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is he. You see, what David keeps reiterating is that God is the only way by which we can be saved. It is the only way by which we can be delivered from uh, temptation. God is the only way by which we will ever stand against the schemes of the devil. God is the only way by which we are saved in an eternal sense. We are saved in a deliverance sense from our sin, and we are saved on a day-to-day -day basis. But he goes on to this, and he says this now, and he is my refuge. Now, he's the rock. He's our salvation. He's the fortress. We will not be shaken, but he's our refuge. That place where we go to take comfort. That place that we go where we find rest. I love that about God. Because God not only is the sure footing, he's not only the fortress that, that shields and protects us, he is not only our salvation, but he is our refuge. He is the place, the one place we can go in a world of turmoil and chaos and, and uncertainty and we can find peace. We can find rest. And I love the way that David writes that. He pens it so beautifully when he says, look, he is my refuge. And therefore, in verse 8, we get to the point where he says, trust in him at all times. Trust in him at all times. He's your rock. He's your salvation. He's your fortress. He's your refuge. Why would we want to put our trust in anything else becomes the question. Why would we want to go to anybody else? Why would we want to try to seek refuge or, 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 or any other thing that we long for in our life outside of God? Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. You see, what David understood is that life wasn't always going to be easy. Life wasn't always going to be hard. In fact, David writes many psalms where he is lamenting and he is weeping because life didn't go the way he wanted it to. But he never left that place where God was. He never left that place where he found peace and rest. He and now he encourages us to trust God. To pour out our heart before him. To be honest with God. Let God know that the place you find yourself today isn't the best place. Let God know that you're struggling. Let God know that you're hurting. Let God know that you don't know what to do next. And that's okay. It's okay to be vulnerable with God. It's okay to not have all the answers. It's okay. Because our God is big enough and he knows what you need. He knows where you're at. He knows where he wants you to be. He knows what he's doing in your life. And so we trust him and we pour out our heart to him. And we can be honest with God. Because in that place, where in that safe place where we can go and be honest and pour out our hearts before God. There we find God working the most in our lives. When we put down our walls, when we let down our defenses, and we just go to God and say, here I am, and I need you. I found those words very encouraging as I read them, and I hope you do as well as you listen to them and read along in your Bibles this morning. I do want to encourage you guys to pray, as we always do. Uh, yesterday, it got kind of cut off at the end there, but we were praying for our essential workers, those who have put themselves on the front lines and, and in the most... Um, most susceptible way to COVID-19. And uh, we prayed also for our governments. We prayed, but I, I just, my, my heart has been on the gospel as of the last couple days. Just the gospel. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for all who believe, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. You see, what Paul realizes is there is no shame in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And my prayer for us is that, is, is, is that as a church, as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, trusting in him and him alone as the only means by which we can be saved, will go forward during this time with confidence, with boldness, and with excitement to proclaim the love and forgiveness of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me that God will give us a, a sense of boldness and courage, that God will go before us and that God will lead us 
where he wants us to be so that the gospel can be proclaimed. And I know that there's a lot of people in churches today that are worried, that are, that are skeptical of our governments and their influence over the church. And, and I just want to say this. As we think about what we just asked God to do for the church, can we trust him that no matter where the governments go, no matter how long the churches are closed, that the gospel isn't bound by four walls. The gospel isn't bound by a government. The gospel will go forward. And will you pray with me that we would be bold as Christians, bold as those holding the truth to proclaim it to those who need it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. And we, we hope that you will join us tomorrow evening, or this evening, excuse me, not tomorrow, but this evening uh, for our evening Bible study. Uh, it will be posted around five o'clock. You guys can check it out at www.nippiganbaptist.com or it will also be on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. We hope you guys have a great rest of your day and God bless.